What's going on guys? Junior's Fishing Company back with another <clears throat> video. So I haven't uploaded a video in a couple weeks. I've been trying to get my boxes filled because it's been a weird, weird November, weird starts to December in Minnesota. Down in the cities we've got like two, three inches on some lakes. That's still a little bit thin. I've been out on two a couple times, but um, I've been tying some stonefly-ish type patterns, so I'm going to have a lot of <clears throat> goose biots in this. Whenever I use bi a ton of biots, I always think stonefly. But um, this is actually a little bit big than what I like to typically tie on. I usually try to do like a size 12, um, just because I don't like a super big jig when I'm fishing through the ice. But it's a little bit easier for the video and um, you gotta have some big ones, so uh, big-ish. So this is just a standard uh, Umpqua 101 um, size 10. I've got a big bead, so I didn't have 532nd dark olive beads. I would really like a like a dark, like a brownish, but um, I don't have every bead size and color. This is a fire hole. This is actually 316, so this is gonna the stone. It's gonna sink like one. So um, what? And I did what I normally do. I wrapped my lead-free wire about as far back as my. I'm gonna put some wire down, and my wire wraps are gonna go right up to my lead, and then the lead is gonna be um, some biots and uh, dubbing. I've done a couple with a pheasant case, um, but I'm not going to do that one here. Um, I'm going to do a biot tail. So these biots are uh, simpler fly, inferno something. I'll put the description in. So I'm going to measure these out. I don't want a super long tail. I'll probably just go maybe even less than half of a shank. Um, and I'm going to put them. I got a little thread ball right down there. I'm not going to put any UV on or anything like that for a hot spot or anything, but um, I just want to get these right on top. And that looks a little bit long, but I'll take it. Um, I always struggle with the tail more so than anything, but again, with biots like this, you can spend, I mean, I don't, I mean, to spend 20 minutes uh, working biots to get them perfect, unless you're Charlie Craven or something, um, to have it destroyed by your first fish, you know. So I cut those biots right along my lead-free wire, and I'm just going to do touching wraps um, on my way up and I'm not going to build up any sort of thread body especially so I've got two wires here one is medium UTC uh, sculpin olive and the other one's brassy hot orange this hot orange is the closest I could come to matching these orange biots it's going to be kind of like a olivey orange pattern um, the fun thing about this is I mean there's a billion different things you can do but you find out really quick that you're kind of stuck. You know, UTC doesn't talk to Simplify and say, hey, let's make wire that matches your biots. So you kind of have to do your best. So I put those right up to my lead. I don't want to wrap anything on my lead because it's just going to add so much bulk. And I'm going to go right down to... I don't want to go too far down where my biots are going to get pushed around. They already are a little bit. Um, but biots, the one really nice thing about biots is um, you can, they're really easy to manipulate and flare or push in or bend. Um, that's the one really nice thing about, these are goose, not turkey, but either one all biots really. Um, so I'm going to build just a little bit of a taper. I'll cover up my lead. Um, I put a little bit of 
super glue in this bead because when I'm putting these biots on and I'm right up to the bead, I don't want that bead sliding up and down. Um, so that's just a little thing that I do um, just to avoid some frustration. I'm making sure that my th thread is always nice and flat. This is 70 denier, uh, you can't see it, 70 denier, just all of UTC. You can use whatever thread you want. I wouldn't use anything thicker um, because you really don't want to add bulk because these two wire wraps are going to do that for you. So I'm going to go all the, put my thread by my bead, make sure that my fingers are ready to go. And I'm just, these first couple wraps are always can always be a little bit trickier. I don't care which color starts and which one ends or anything like that. I'm just gonna do touching wraps with those two wires. And I kinda want them to be straight. Sometimes if I do them quick, this one's a little slanted. I like just for them to be straight, but sometimes um, if you're not careful, it kinda looks like a, kinda like a candy cane. And I'm right on my lead. I don't know if I'm going to do one more. Um, I don't want... Maybe I'll take one off. I'll do a bigger body, maybe. Um, I'm going to tie these off. So you got to be careful. This is 70 denier. I mean, it breaks pretty easily. So I'm just going to... I'm going to cover this with a bunch of wraps. I'm not even counting because I'm talking. I can't do both at the same time. I'm not uh, a magician. So I'm just going to make sure that those are down because I don't want these loosening up. Um, and I'm too nervous to break off these at the same time. So I'm going to do one at a time. And I kind of like having the brassy medium or brassy small because it just leaves a little bit of kind of a, I wouldn't say texture, but um, a little more detail into your body. So I'll come all the way. This is going to be a long body. That's all right. <clears throat> I'm going to put down just a tiny bit of dubbing. The dubbing I'm using is um, just Hair's Mask Dubbing Brown Olive by Nature Spirit. Um, again, a brown olive, dark olive, olive thread. Um, if I had Sculpin Olive dubbing, I would use it. If I had a Sculpin Olive bead head, I would use that. I don't even know if you can get Sculpin Olive colored head beads, but I'm just going to put down a tiny bit of dubbing behind my first, that's going to be way too much, behind my first set of biots to, you know, kind of help add a little bit of push out for those biots, but mostly just to add some, some green. So I've got two biots here. And when I'm doing this, again, this is where it gets really tricky having them perfect. Perfect length and perfect on the sides. So you kind of want to use the things that you've already tied down. So I'm going to put this right on the side and I'm going to line it up with about a little bit past my first wire wrap and I can tweak it at first and then I can see well that's going to be too long so I'm going to pull it up right to about my first wire and I'm going to make sure that it stays right on the side and I'll kind of anchor that down these are super slippery 
So you gotta, they'll keep moving on you if you don't anchor them down really well. And that's part of the tricky part to these is they're super slippery. So now I can take my second and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And the one thing I'm gonna really try <clears throat> is get it on the same side here. Because again, if it's off just literally like the almost the width of this biot, at the end you're going to be able to tell. And I've taken a half hour to make them perfect, but you really don't have to. So I'll put it right kind of by that first um, wire wrap. That's going to be a little bit long, so I'll pull that just to make them about even. That looks half decent. Again, the great thing about biots, I can kind of push this out a little bit. Um, you can kind of tell they look good from the top, but again, it's it's the side that is the trickiest part. The length is easy. It's getting them perfectly lined up, getting them photo ready. So I've got my first ones down. <clears throat> I'm going to put down more dubbing and actually a pretty decent amount. Not necessarily um, to push out my next biots, but to add some size to the body because the butt of this is really thick with all that wire and so I don't want the top of this to be super off and this dubbing is really buggy and that's fine kinda want it that way but just for the sake of what you're gonna be looking at I'll trim a little bit So now I've got my next two biots locked and loaded. These ones, so if you're, if these two first two that you put down were off, these next two are going to be off. It's kind of like building a stone wall, or, you know, like if you've laid bricks. If your first one's off, the rest of them are going to be off. Um, so you kind of just have to trust the first two because I'm going to line this up with the first one I put down it doesn't really matter yet how long they are you could have them be the same length I don't necessarily like that maybe about half a little more and then anchor that down with some good thread wraps and if anything I kinda want it up not down um, so like lying on top higher up towards the top of my fly if anything I don't want it I don't want to go on too low <clears throat> and I'm gonna trim as close to that as I can luckily this big bead has a lot of room on the inside where it can just fold in last but not least again I'm gonna line this up with my other biot three wraps or so and now I'm gonna pull this based off of that third one I put in and sometimes it's hard to tell that looks pretty good I don't know if you can see that very well. These are really thin biots. Um, I could sit here all day and make sure these are perfect. It looks a little bit long. And that's why I glued down this bead because I'm using this bead kind of to hold my hand and I don't want that 
to slide around. So I'll anchor that one down. I say anchor, I don't know, tie it down. Make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm going to use actually quite a bit of dubbing on this last part. Make sure that that gets put down. And I'll go right up to where my bias are. Get my last bit of dubbing. And finish this off. I'm not going to put any UV resin on this. If I added a pheasant collar or a case or something like that, maybe I would. Um, but on this one, I really didn't feel like it. I'm going to need some more. I like this um, hair's mask dubbing. Some of some of the dubbings are like crazy, have crazy amounts of guard hair. Not a huge fan of those ones, but this one seems to be pretty good. So I've got, try to keep that straight. I'm going to whip finish off. Usually just three or four. And I've got my super heavy jig ready to go. Um, you can, I've tied a couple where the biots have been more on top um, or where they're super flared, but really, um, and th they don't break super easily, um, but I kind of like when they're on the side and they're tapered a little bit, the lengths. Um, I've even done some where the two by the closest to the bead are actually longer than the first ones, um, and those look pretty cool too. But um, I've got just one other, I mean, there, the, the colors and the patterns that you can do are kind of endless. This one is a um, little tan and black. Um, and I did a little pheasant case on that one. I didn't add any UV resin to it. Um, <clears throat> just because I don't necessarily think that would um, look much better. But Junior's Fishing Company, juniorsfishing.com. I've got a couple more ideas for panfish videos or fly videos. Um, and then maybe I'll head back to deer hair country and um, my boxes are getting pretty good for winter so um, at least the first little bit like and subscribe we'll see you in the next one